Hi, my name is Robin Wong. I'm a photographer based in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. This YouTube channel has just hit 60,000 subscribers. Thank you so much to each and every one of you. I appreciate you for being here. Thank you so much for watching my videos, for supporting me, for being with me all this time. Thank you so much for the coffee, for the contributions. There is no Robin Wong without you guys. And I'm here to tell you, I'm not going anywhere. I'm here to stay. I have plenty of content to publish and I can't wait to get to them. You must be wondering, hey Robin, what happened? Why are you indoor? Well, it has been raining a lot in Kuala Lumpur. It is the monsoon season, so it's getting a little bit difficult for me to go out and film myself uh, doing video. So I thought, hey, you know, I'm here. This is my room. I have some nice lighting set up. I have this really cool condenser microphone. Why don't I do a throwback to Robin Speaks podcast? So let's do this. Episode 11, where I just speak random things about photography and I will take this opportunity to answer some popular questions. Let's do a short Q&A, some recent questions that I've received in my latest YouTube videos which I publish here. Nukum990 said, Robin, if you do explore further why you don't prefer the Olympus 17mm f1.8, I'd love to see it. I've been in love and hate relationship with it myself. I can't stand it on my EM1 Mark II. Now, I did mention that I will do a separate video to talk about why I don't like the Olympus 17 f1.8. So this is it. I'm sharing my perspective now. You see, I've owned the Olympus 17 f1.8 before. I bought it almost immediately after launch and I have reviewed the lens even in my official review which I've published many years back in my blog robinwon.blogspot.com I had two parts I remember in part two I mentioned that uh, there's something about the lens that I don't quite like uh, nothing wrong with the lens by the way technically the lens is sharp it's sharp wide open at f1.8 the corners are sharp it produces beautiful bokeh the technical flaws are well controlled I don't see any distortion, chromatic aberration, I'm sure there's some software correction involved. Everything about the lens you expect from a typical M Zuko lens from Olympus. It's just that I take many, many photographs with that lens. I've owned it for about a year before I saw it off previously. Uh, I don't get many favorites from that lens in comparison to say the 12 f2 or 45 f1.8. I love the, in my images, there, there were a lot of hits with the other two prime lenses, right? And when Olympus launched the 25 f1.8, which gives us the equivalent of 15 millimeters uh, perspective, I immediately saw off the 17 f1.8 to fund the 25 f1.8. And I loved that lens. It was my favorite for so many years before I upgraded to 25 f1.2 Pro. Now, I let the lens go immediately once I knew that I, I have the 25 and Initially, I thought that the problem was about the focal length. I may not like the 35 millimeters equivalent perspective. Something was wrong with me not being able to use that 35 millimeters focal length. But as I went along, as I tried to force myself to use the 35 millimeters more and more, I even bought the X100 Fuji previously, and I had the X100F recently, and I even bought the 35 F2 for full frame Canon 5D, and I loved my images from these other options, right? Uh, I know that the Fuji X100 series, there's some problems with which as I've mentioned before, I will not repeat it, but at least the images I got from it, I quite like it, they look okay. And I have many images from the Canon 35 F2 that I really like. So it's not the focal length. The problem is not with the 35 millimeters equivalent perspective, I think it has something to do with the Olympus 17 f1.8. There might be some 
overcorrection. I don't know if that makes any sense. Maybe there's some distortion and the camera tried to de-warp the distortion and because of that uh, correction, the images look somehow flat and it just doesn't look right. The proportion is a little bit off. Something just doesn't look natural. I just can't quite put my finger on it. It just doesn't work for me. And I get it. If you like the Olympus 70 f1.8, uh, if you've been shooting with it, you love what the lens can do for you, then don't let me convince you otherwise. Just continue shooting with it. It just doesn't work for me. Maybe there's some personal bias happening. Again, I can't quantify what I'm saying here. I don't have hard evidence to tell you why I don't like this lens. I just don't. And we are allowed to have our personal favorites and we're allowed to dislike certain products. It is just what it is. Eduardo Anibaro said, why just Sony or Canon? This was in reference to my consideration of jumping to full frame mirrorless. I was saying that if I were to quit Olympus, leave the system behind, and if I were to go to mirrorless full frame, I would consider either the Sony or Canon RF. The reason why I didn't consider Nikon well, it's very obvious, right? Nikon colors? I'm sorry guys, I just don't like it. I know this is again very personal. If you love Nikon colors, go for it. But between Nikon and Canon, I would definitely choose Canon. And Sony, as bad as their colors are, they've made improvements over the years. Their latest cameras, the A7 Mark IV, even the A7 Mark III, right? Or well, seven A7R Mark IV, the images look quite okay, not as good as Canon or what Olympus is doing, the OM system is doing, but the color science is improving. But Nikon, I just don't see it. And um, this is based on my earlier experience, this may not be valid anymore, but I just can't shake this off. When Nikon Z6 and Z7, they were launched, I think it was in 2018 or 2019, a few years back, it was the first mirrorless full frame, right? It was a huge deal. It was the first time coming into this game, fighting Sony, fighting everyone else, right? I tried the Z6 and Z7. The autofocus, can you believe it? It was slower then Olympus EM1 original, which was released in 2013. It was six years ago. All right, so we have like five, six years gap from Olympus EM1 to the Nikon Z6 and Z7, and yet the Olympus autofocus was way superior. I'm not talking about like just tiny bit faster, right? It was at least three times faster and a lot more reliable. We had a camera side by side. Uh, it was after a street shooting session. Me and my friends, we walked into the Nikon center and we tried the camera and we compared. The autofocus was really bad. And that was red flag, right? How can I trust a professional system? I'm gonna invest that much money into jumping ship and I can't work with such poor autofocus. I know it must have improved in Z7 Mark II, Z6 Mark II, and maybe there's some firmware improvement in here, but seriously, Nikon, like, guys, you guys need to catch up. PGX8 said, so you have used the 12 F2, the 45 F1.8, and the 75 F1.8. Do you use multiple bodies or keep switching lenses? What bag are you using to carry the lenses? Well, sometimes I use multiple bodies. I'll, I'll use, say, the 12 f2 wide angle on the EM1 Mark III, and maybe the 45 f1.8 on another camera, say, the EM1 Mark II. Uh, if I anticipate that the event is fast moving, say I'm shooting a wedding or a dance on stage or something that, that I need to react reflexively, right? I don't have time to change lens. I need to be super aware at all times. I need to jump into action. Then I'll carry two or sometimes even three cameras with one of the lenses attached on each, right? Uh, but if I were shooting, say, portraits, or if I knew the event is very slow, you know, some of the events you know, if, if you've shot them before, they're not like, you know, you blink and miss kind of um, moment, right? So you know that you can slow down, you can take your time, then you can change lens. I'll just use one body, the EM1 Mark III, and I keep another body in the back, and I'll just switch lenses, and I know that I can switch lenses fast because I've handled Olympus gear for so many years, I can just turn, turn both my eyes, close both my eyes, and just change lens just 
like that, no issue, right? Uh, which, which bag that I'm using, I usually carry a messenger bag. Medium size, not too large, is enough to fit everything. I did a video before to talk about how I pack for a wedding shoot. I'll put the link to the video up here, please check it out. The walking vlogging man said, the 15mm doesn't have that purple fringing on Panasonic cameras. And that is why I don't purchase used lenses. Buy it new and stop being cheap. Now you can't send it back for a replacement or refund. Well, I'm sorry to tell you that there's no such thing as replacement or refund in Malaysia. You buy something, you like it, you don't like it, you keep it. There's no such thing as, oh, you know, I can exchange this for something else, or I just return it within how many days. No, there's no such thing. I don't have that privilege. Now stop telling me what to do. <laughs> I love the 15 f1.7. Despite the purple fringing issues, I've been using it a lot, especially for my video on my main channel here, and doing some casual street photography. I don't think it's a problem. Even if it's some purple fringing, I can correct it. Albar said, so glad you changed from Olympus after the way they kicked you. Now, two problems here. Number one, I didn't change from Olympus. I don't know if you've seen any of my videos recently, like more than 50% of my content are still very heavily Olympus related. Either I share tips about using Olympus OMD, or I was shooting with Olympus gear, say in a job or an event or portraits, and I share these photographs in my experience using my Olympus gear. I, I even reviewed two of the latest OM system products, the lenses, the 20 f1.4 and 40 to 150 f4 Pro. So I don't know. <laughs> I didn't change anything. I haven't jump shipped uh, just because I play with a few other different cameras, say the Canon 5D full frame, a Pentax K01, or a Nikon D50, some older cameras and lenses. Hey, I'm a photographer. As a photographer, I love old cameras. I love old brands. And that's just how it is. I'm curious about, you know, sometimes besides just vanilla, I want to try chocolate and strawberry as well, right? Why just stick with one flavor? And they kicked you. No, they didn't. I left. There's a difference. They ignored me, I wasn't happy, and I left. I wasn't kicked. Dave Bellamy said, Robin, what color balance do you use for the night shots under outdoor artificial lighting? Dave, I don't change so much of the white balance. Most of the time, I'll leave the auto white balance uh, just as is. I let the camera decide what the color balance is while I was shooting. And then when I get home during post-processing, because I shot everything in RAW, I have the flexibility to change the temperature or the color balance of the image, right? Uh, most of the time, again, I didn't do so much changes. Uh, it's just minor tweaks there and here to get what I want. So pretty much, I just let the camera do the colors. And as we all know, Olympus or OM system, they give us really good colors. I hope that answers your question. Moon asked, Robin, did you post-process these images or were they straight out of camera JPEGs? I actually picked up a cheap 5D last year and I can see why people hop onto Canon's color signs for JPEGs. My images from my Canon full frame 5D were all shot in RAW and I post-processed them in Capture One software. I don't do a lot of post-processing. The tweaks are very minor. I will change the white balance a little bit. Sometimes the, the white balance is a little bit too warm for Canon. Uh, not a bad thing. If you like warm colors, then of course you'll get very pleasing results. But I prefer my colors to be a little bit more on the neutral side of things. I'll tweak the white balance, I'll add the contrast, and sometimes in a very harsh condition, I'll just balance the dynamic range, recover the highlights, pull the shadows, and pretty much that's it. I don't touch the sharpness, I don't touch the noise reduction, I don't crop so much. Sometimes I straighten the image a little bit and that's it. Uh, very, very minor post-processing, and you can say that the images are almost as good as straight out of camera. Paul Daniels said, Hi Robin, watched an earlier video where you mentioned the importance of a reliable tripod, but didn't see which one you are using. I'm using EM1 Mark II and loving it, thanks to advice and reviews. Still a lot to learn, a bit different to my OM2 Black. Also, are you using a screen protector on your LCD screen? Great content and enjoying all the tips and tricks. Thanks for the compliments, Paul. 
uh, to answer your first question, which tripod I'm currently using, I don't have a specific tripod for photography. Uh, my kind of photography does not require me to use a tripod, but I do have a light tripod. Uh, it's a slick Sprint Pro 3, and it is a very light, very compact travel tripod, which I use mostly for my video. So all my talking heads, even this one, uh, the camera is mounted on the slick Sprint Pro 3 tripod. And all my talking head videos, the cameras were on that tripod. And the only reason I got it is because it's so light, it's so small, and it's so easy to carry around. It's quick, it's very quick to set up, uh, but it's not the sturdiest tripod. The tripod does have a little bit of micro movements, it shakes. Uh, if you do long exposure photography, if you need a sturdy tripod, this will not be the tripod that I recommend. I'm not the best person to talk to about tripods since I don't have much experience. I'm sure there are other reviews out there that can help you to decide which tripod works best for you. Uh, oh yeah, you have a second question, right? Uh, do I use a screen protector? No. Uh, if there are scratches on the screen, let there be scratches. I don't really care. Uh, in case you haven't noticed, uh, the cameras that I have, they are with me through all the way. <laughs> I had my EM5 back then. I still have it now. I still have my original EM1. I still have it now. I don't sell it off. I use my cameras until they die. That's all the questions I have to answer in this session. I know there are a lot more. I'll try to answer them by typing it manually as usual. But hey, if you have more questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. I have a lot more content to share, some really interesting ones. I can't wait to share with you guys, so do stay tuned. In the meantime, if you have any suggestions or any ideas for me, I would love to listen. Let me know again in the comments below. If you found this particular video useful to you, if I've, I've answered some of your questions, or if you found this beneficial in any way, please consider buying me a cup of coffee or you can contribute directly to my PayPal. Links in the description below on how I can do that. Any small contribution goes a long way, will definitely help me to continue making more content and publish them right here. Please give me a thumbs up, comment, share, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, please go out and take more photographs. Bye-bye.